Right, hello everyone and welcome to Season 2 of the Hull City Career Mode, Episode 17, the start of Season 2. <coughs> and you can see there by the title, excuse me, you can see there by the title, it certainly looks good. Seven new signings and which key player gets sold to Liverpool, you will find out. Is it clickbaity? You'll, you'll have to stick around and watch the episode to find out. We yeah, are looking through, uh, looking over the scenes from uh, from last season. Then we did win the double. We won the Papa John's Trophy and the League One title. Moving up into the Championship, the squad was definitely good. En- it's definitely good enough to not only survive in this league, not only finish mid-table in the league, but I'd say if we get our form together and sort and sort things out defensively, we can push for playoffs. And if we make improvements as well to to said defence, we could. Definitely, we could definitely fight for playoffs. Anyway, transitioning into the new season from last season, uh, we take the middle pre-season tournament, the middle amount of cash, and see what happens. We sim the training on the first day and uh, head into our objective screen where we have to reach a round of 32 in the FA Cup, same as last season. We have to finish mid-table in the uh, in the championship. So the Alam's not setting us over uh, more than what I'd want as a minimum, and you can see the budget there: nine million, a bit more than the f- than the three Freddos and five pence we found we found stuffed down the cushions on the sofa that we had last year. And you can see we've got a lot of players out of contract as well, so I gave contracts to Josh Emmanuel, George Honeyman, and um, Jack Byrne, who only wanted a one-year extension, but I hope we can get that sorted very soon. Uh, Malik Wilkes got an extension, um, of course. Keen Lewis Potter got an extension. I'm not letting him go. The form that he was in last season, he might he might be close to breaking the record that Stuart Elliott had, where um, well that Stuart Elliott has uh, scored the most goals at the KCOM. Stuart Elliott has 35 most goals of any Hull City player at the KCOM. Uh, I think Keen Lewis Potter is definitely going to break that record. So you can see there on the transfer list: Tom Eves, Richie Smallwood, Matt Ingram, Jordi Device, Callum Elder. Um, yeah, to, about the Richie Smallwood transfer list, I just wasn't using him. So sorry, Lucas, his nephew. Uh, your uncle's off, but where? One point <laughs> uh, one million. Then we got for Tom Eaves from Huddersfield. Fraser Campbell's just reti- just retired. They want another Hull City striker to replace him, but this time they don't want one who they want one who's still got a bit of experience. But Eaves is worse than Fraser Campbell. And you can see through pre-season there, cracking through pre-season, beating Norschland there. Uh, an offer from Heidenheim of 1.05 million for Alfie Jones, 65 rated, 23 years old. We take that. And Callum Elder is subject to an offer from FC, FCSB. I'm not sure what team that is. Not sure what country they're from. But uh, 1.95 Elder with his contract up at the end of the year. I was going to try and push for a little bit more, over 2 million. I decided to stop at 2.1 because I didn't want him to walk out. So I thought 2.1 million for Callum Elder, who was back up to Brandon Fleming last year. It, they accept it, so we'll have him. We, we'll have that. We'll happily have that. And we're through the uh, pre-season group as well there. You can see in the semi-finals against Bronby. The boys looking a little bit tired, but they pull through. 1-0 win, Malik Wilkes. And pre-season final only though after we see Alfie Jones has been sold and Shanghai SIPG coming with an offer for one point of one point six million for Louis Coyle. I don't even argue it. I just I just take it. But on to the new signings now then. First of all we go for a new backup goalkeeper. My options, you can see there there's Alex Bass, Gavin Bazanu, but the one I go for on the tra- on the transfer shortlist is Alex Palmer. He was very good in League One last year. Uh, was I think he had the second ha- most clean sheets, um, and the goalkeeper that had the most, Craig McGillivray, uh, went up. And obviously West Brom is going to be very very low choice there, so they'll let him go cheap. So I'd so me and Slavan Bilic we have a, a little have a little meeting in my office and we meet at 1.15 million for Alex Palmer. He'll come in and shove Matt Ingram down to third choice goalkeeper who is of course on the transfer list. Um for uh for Mr Palmer then myself his agent and him sit down in my office at the training ground. 
that looks very, very tropical to be Cottingham, to say the very least. Um, we agree on our rotation squad role, three-year deal, no release clause, and he wants 6,900 grand a week. Um, we take the bonus out, and he still wants it. It's fine. On to a new left back, because Callum Elder's on his way out. Three options for me. Max Clark, Josh Tymon, two academy products out of Hull City want to bring them back. Or Omar Richards. Um, st- uh, plays for Reading in real life, moved on to Angers um, in the game. Could we just... Could we... Could we manage a valuation deal? Definitely not. Eight, eight point nine. I'm not paying that. So it's going to be either Timon or Clark that we go for. Then all in a row, we go for Max Clark first. Do we? Yeah, we go for Max Clark first. Do we? <laughs> yes, we do. Make your mind up, Joe. Bloody hell. Uh, we go for Max Clark first. Um, obviously left City at the end of the 2017-18 season to go to uh, Vitesse. Still there. Uh, we offer Richie Smallwood um, in exchange with an extra million slapped on top. They say, nah, Jacob Greaves on 1.75. So I say, no, Jacob. I, s- I can see Jacob having a long future at this club. I can see him maybe being a future captain. Uh, yeah, so I banish that idea and just say, look, straight value, 1.9. What you got for me? 2.7. Ooh, work to be done. There's work to be done. Um, so we, um, I came back with 2.2 and they said that's all right. So Leonid Slutsky, not the manager anymore, but I'm not sure who the manager is. But, Leon, but Leonid Slutsky's replacement said that's all right. But we're going for Josh Timon next. And he's got a big release clause in there. He's, he's the lowest rated of them all, but... He's higher rated than uh, than Max Clark, who offer Smallwood and a million again. They say just want three and a half mil off you, mate. Seventeen percent sell on, no player exchange. So I just say, nah, get gone, get gone. I do want to make other signings in this window, so it's Max Clark who we're going with. Um, I'm not sure who my uh, well, obviously my preferred one would have been Omar Richards, but out of Clark and Timon, I'm not sure which of the two I would have preferred. But you know, whatever. Whatever. So, uh, yeah, Max Clark, important squad role. Two-year deal uh, is what's initially proposed. I argue back and say, no, we want three years out of your Max. But uh, hopefully where I want this club to go, we should uh, you should be able to keep him on for a little bit longer than that. Nine and a half grand a week, give him a hundred quid a week pay rise, 20 grand a week sign-on bonus. And after making 27 appearances for his hometown club before he left, He's back. And Max Clark, will he play first choice or will he play second choice? It depends on how he performs. Anyway, on to a backup striker. Now, having let Tom Eves go, there was two in my mind. Ryan Hardy, who uh, was very impressive when he played for Plymouth on loan from Blackpool against us last season. And Antoine Semenyo. Semenyo, the younger of the two, also the highest rated of the the two. I offer Richie Smallwood and 500 k to uh, Blackpool for Ryan Harry. They say no, just 1.65 mil. I say okay, okay. And then I look at wingers, then realise oh we've not got any. Uh, do you fancy Matt Ingram? Do you want a backup goalie? Do you want a backup goalie? Then uh, we'll decrease that a little bit. We'll decrease that to a million, and keep. We'll remove the sell-on clause as well. Uh, what do you say? 1.4. Nah. I, I'm already thinking here. Semenyo's the better of the two. He's going to be more expensive, but uh, is this worth the money? So we kept plugging away, though. We kept plugging away. I think, yeah, we agreed on 1.3 million for uh, for Ryan Hardy, 24 years old. Scotland! He's from Scotland. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, Semenyo, three years younger, one rating higher than Hardy. Um, meet up with the Bristol City gaffer whose name has completely gone out my head. We offer them Richie Smallwood as well and say, look, 1.5? 2.4 straight. Um, so then I turn to plan B. Plan B being Matt Ingram. We reduce the transfer fee to... Uh, 
2 million. No, 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 it's not 2 million. We'd increase it to 1.7, I think. Yeah, 1.7. They say no, just want 2.4. They don't want any players. They don't want a backup goalkeeper. They don't want who's the club captain in real life. So I just say, look, 2.1 million, straight up. What are you saying? They want 2.15. So I'm like, oh, snap your hand off for that. 50 grand over valuation for Antoine Semenyo. I'll definitely take that. So in, in my mind here, it was up to personal preference now. Semenyo would cost more, but he's better. And that was who I decided to go for. Antoine Semenyo. Brilliant stats. Brilliant stats. We'd enter negotiations with him. And let's see what happens. He would play back up to Keen Lewis Potter. I think he uh, I think he knew that. But he was but you, there's a reason Bristol City let him go so cheap because he about because he would have been about third choice striker. And he's going to be he's going to at least be second choice. Uh, so rotation squad role, four year deal. He wants a paid decrease as well. What a geezer. Big sign on bonus though. 57 grand sign on bonus. But Antoine Semenyo's in. Max Clark, Alex Palmer, and Antoine Semenyo all in. And the business is going on quite well so far. Rejecting offer for George Long there uh, from Besiktas, and we accept an offer for Festus Arta. You can see that Louis Coyle has gone to Shanghai SIPG. In the, uh, in the pre season tournament final, then. We'd miss out on penalties. Penalties. Keen Lewis Potter missed the decisive one for us. Gutted. Gutted. But who cares? It's pre-season. He scored 56 goals last season. Who's really bothered? Anyway, next. Loan offer for uh, for Anthony Gordon. That's who we'd go for. Um, obviously, with no Adelican now. Uh, we've only got three wingers. So... Uh, we didn't have a Delican for most of the second half of last season, but we didn't really need um, an extra one. So I think, you know what, right, let's go for a loan offer for Anthony Gordon. He was someone who's been on my radar for a little bit. Let's see what happens. So we meet up with Carlo Ancelotti. We agree on a 60-40 wage split on the loan till the end of the season. However, then I see this guy. Jacob Italiano, recommended to me by one of you. He's originally a Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's been released... By uh, Munch and Gladbach in this say, in this season two, so I decided you know what let's have a little look. He's only he's 63 rated, but 19 years old. He can't be all bad. Rotation squad role, five year deal. His wages are dirt cheap. It's uh, it's it's dirt cheap. So Jacob Italiano comes in, and next we'd continue our spending spree and go in for Mr. Flynn Downs. Big, big player for Ipswich. Ipswich fans love him. But they didn't go up. They floundered last season. They were they were quite low down the table for most of it before creeping up just outside the playoffs. We offered them Matt Ingram on 1.2. They wanted Jacob Greaves on 1.2 with a 15% sell-on. I go, nah, get in. Get straight in the skip. Get straight in the skip. I look... At strikers realise that this is only Lewis Potter and Semenya because I'm dumb. Um, so we offer Richie Smallwood. Do does someone finally want Richie Smallwood in this save? We up the transfer fee to 1.5 million. Keep the 15% sell on in there. They want 1.9 and Richie Smallwood. So I come back. The shrewd negotiator that I am, or you could call me a cheapskate. <laughs> um, 1.7 plus Richie Smallwood and a 15% sell-on fee. We have that. It's fine. So, uh, Ryan Hardy's still waiting for negotiations there, bless him. Um, it's not happening, mate. But Flynn Downs, however, he's coming in. We meet in, uh, we meet in the tropical um, surrounding area of Hull, known as Cottingham. Um, we agree a four-year deal on a rotation squad roll with Flynn Downs on 4.7 grand a week. We remove the bonus. Does he go for it? Yes, he does. 4.7 grand a week for Flynn Downs. He comes in uh, to act as a backup central midfielder. Replace Smallwood. 
with um, with thingy with Flynn Downs. Next up, we're straight to An- we're, st- we're back to Ancelotti. He's just been waiting outside. He's he's gone. He's gone. Popped to I don't know where. Where's Nice in Cottingham? Um, I don't know. Thingy Road, Cottingham High Road, whatever. Um, Castle Street. That's that's it. He's got he's gone in Max and Spencer's on Castle Street. Um, before waiting in the change room. So we go. We just give him a ring. Say, look, we want Jared Branthwaite. Come back. Um, <laughs> so we agree a deal for Jared Branthwaite. Rotation squad role, five year deal. I can't remember the the thingy price. But uh, yeah, he's. Uh, I, I think it was about two million. Yeah, about two. I think it was two point one million. If I remember back in the footage, we agree a uh, five point six grand a week deal with Jared Branthwaite. He comes in as backup centre half. Fester Sarter's gone. Offers for Dan Batty and Matt Ingram. Uh, Batty's rumoured to be going in real life as I'm recording this. Apparently, Doncaster are interested. He might have gone by the time this goes out. But Batty, we reject that offer from Feyenoord. And Portland Timbers want Matt Ingram for one million on the dot. We accept that, and you can see right now Ingram has left. He's gone to America. Good luck, Matt. And now we need a new right back to replace Louis Coyle. Two options for me. Well, a couple of options really: Ethan Laird, Tom Edwards, or this man, Nico Williams, the 20-year-old Welshman, 71 rated. Jurgen Klopp came into my office now. Uh, at this point, I was like, right, we've not got much money here, so I need to be quite shrewd with this. So I got three million initially, and say, well, how are you saying, Klopp? He wants Jared Branthwaite. He wants an Evertonian. So I think, I think, hang on, he wants Branthwaite. We want. We've just signed him, but have we got anyone else? We got anyone else of decent value? Because you know, there's players higher rated than Branthwaite in this team. But not many of them I want to get rid of. Jordi Device, however, is one that I do want to get rid of. Get his wages off the books. 3.6 million is worth. I say Device plus 1.8. Klopp says yes. Jurgen Klopp says yes. I maybe could have um, slimmed the deal out a little bit. Maybe got docked down to 1.5 or whatever. But I don't mind. So that's the that's the key player. Well, he's not really a key player. You, you've just got... Clickbaited. No, I'm on <laughs> He is a high rated player. He's one of the highest rated players in this team. But last season, he just got absolutely murked out of the team by Jacob Greaves. So, Device is off to Liverpool. And Nico Williams is coming to Hull. We offer him 30 grand a week because I don't want him to stall out. But, um, yeah, uh, 30 grand a week, 50 grand sell on fee. Nico Williams and his agent say yes. Nico Williams is in. Jordi Device has gone to um, to Liverpool, and that's where this episode ends. We're about to play Burnley in the opening game of the season. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you later. Another new sign in the next episode as well. See you later. Goodbye.